Hiya! Video Gaming Father here with a video review of a funny barbecue tower defense simulator called Go Home Dinosaurs. Does the game have any humorous story full of fun, as its name indicates? Will you find an untraditional main hero there? Is it just the 154th clone of traditional tower defense schema, or are there any innovative ideas enhancing the traditional gameplay? Will it properly test your strategic and tactical thinking, or is it just a piece of cake? Does it have a user-friendly interface and controls? Do the game audiovisuals please your eyes and ears, or will they rather cause you a headache? And is it a family-friendly kind of game? Let's spend the next few minutes with my Go Home Dinosaurs video review to find the answers to all these questions. Okay, the story. Is it really as funny as the game name itself? The answer is positive this time. The main hero, a gopher, wants to peacefully prepare his barbecue and enjoy his steaks. Unluckily, there are the hordes of hungry dinosaurs prepared to eat all gopher steaks before they are even properly barbecued. However, gopher is not prepared to give up on his beloved steaks and is ready to defend them at all costs. Does it sound childish? Yes, a little bit. Does it sound crazy enough? Totally. Gopher, barbecue and dinosaurs mixed together sound like a lot of fun. So do not try to look for some deep and sophisticated story here. Just enjoy the few comic sketches that prepare the good background for the humorous game atmosphere. Let's find out whether it's properly supported by the gameplay. Need to break the ice. The first few levels serve as a simple tutorial. They are very quick and will teach you the main game principles in a clear and easy way. As in almost every tower defense game, there is a predefined path where there are dinosaurs cave on one end and your barbecued states on the other. Your goal is to build defense structures along with this path, not to allow the enemies to reach your states. What is not so traditional is that you do not just build the defense structures, but also control the main hero of the game. Go for it. He moves underground like a mole, pretty fast one by the way, and can easily get to an unoccupied field along the dinosaur's path. He also actively defends this path by throwing rocks at the incoming dinosaurs, so it's very useful to navigate him to the right spots to plug the holes in your defense structure. Unlike in many traditional tower defense games, you are not getting credits to buy new defense structures for eliminated enemies, but for collecting coconuts from the palm trees that randomly appear on the game field. This is another task for your gopher, and later he will also get the ability to drill the rocks that prevent you from building defense towers on the fields when they lie. So the gopher has a full hand of work and you need to navigate him quickly so he doesn't idle for a second. Now let's take a closer look at the defense structures helping you to protect your precious tanks. The basic defense tower is represented by the stump gunner, which is a military-like gopher shooting at dinos from his trusty stump. He is not causing a big damage, so is useful mainly against the basic dinosaurs. Then there is a snowflake sentry slowing down dinos and also causing them a small damage. It is useful mainly in places with a big concentration of defense structures. And we are getting to the stronger weapons. Gopher defense laser hits all dinos in its path, so it's useful for defending the long straight parts of the dino's path. Tesla zapper stuns and damage all nearby dinos with a jolt of electricity, while DJ Go 4 causes damage with his loud music to all dinos in two surrounding directions. Teleport twins send dinos back to the beginning of their path. Sergeant Quickshot is a promoted stump gunner that causes quite a big damage to all dinos in his range by rapid fire. There is also an old prospector who digs for the coins. I will mention the use for them a little bit later. There are supposed to be three more defense structures yet that I have not uncovered. Each defense structure is defined by its cost, the coconuts, and also by its shape, which is a deciding factor if it fits to some place or not. There are the levels where some types of towers cannot be used because they do not simply fit anywhere on the map. The number of defense structures is satisfying and I have found usage for most of them well, maybe except Tesla ones that I have not really used much, 
The only minus I can see here is that there are no numbers for the damage and fire rate, so you need to test each defense tower on the field first to find out how useful it really is. Are there any upgrades in the game? Unfortunately not for your towers, but there are some at least for your gopher. What are they then? The first one is a fireball that allows your gopher to throw the lava rocks causing dinos higher damage. Then there is a slow the barrel, causing an instant boom right when you need it and destroying everything close to the gopher, whirlwind making your gopher whirlwind of rapid fire rocks and my favorite gopher swarm providing you with the reinforcements of three gopher robots that attack, harvest and dig for you. There are supposed to be three more yet that I have not yet seen so far. The gopher upgrades are quite useful and they are time limited which is reasonable but there are no cooldowns for them so you can only use them as many times as many cards with them you have in your inventory. This would not be such a problem but considering that you also need to use cards for your towers, you can also build as many towers as many cards with them you have in your inventory and your inventory can contain only up to 7 cards even when you have gone through the half of the game which is rather limited. But on the other hand, it makes you study game maps and types of the dinosaurs carefully to select the right cards for each level. Which might be considered positive after all. One just needs to get used to it. Will you be facing original enemies in a variable environment? The enemy's characters are based on real dinosaurs but have been made with a sense of humor which really fits the game. You can find here Tyna Triceratops, which is a slow and steady and walks like in some fashion show, Bruno Stegosaurus, which is slow but very strong and provides the other dinos the place to cover, PT Pterodactyl, that is quite weak and flying at medium speed, Toad Rex, who is very strong and walks with the medium speed, Crash Pteranodon, with the rackets attached to his behind that flies fast, Compi that is weak but quite fast and tends to come in the whole group, and Vesa Velociraptor who hides in the bush until she is startled to run. The game consists of three worlds and the last level in each world is a boss battle where you need to eliminate a slow but very strong enemy. So far I have seen giant stegosaurus with a purple punk haircut in the last level of the first world. The enemies are funny and variable enough I can see. There are just three worlds, first one with grass, the second one with the sand and the third one with snow, but the environment is really not very variable and interesting. What is better is the level design as the shapes of the dino's pets make you choose your different structures carefully. Sometimes there are the long straight parts where you can use the lasers for, while sometimes there are full of corners where you need to use the weapons causing the damage to everything in surrounding fields. I was only missing some moments of surprise in the form of opening another part in the middle of the level as it is in many other tower defense games. However, the levels are short and you usually do not need more than 5 minutes to finish each of them, so there is virtually no space for such design elements. What else can we find in the game? Well, not much to be honest. I have already mentioned that you collect the coins that sometimes drop off eliminated dinosaurs or get as a prize for a successfully completed level, you need to be fast by the way and click as many of them as possible as they disappear quite quickly. There is a shop in the game where you can use them to buy upgrades and cosmetic items. However, the shop stock reminds me rather of shops in some socialistic country than some supermarket piled up by goods. You can find there just an upgrade card for your gopher or some cosmetic stuff that might change the look of your gopher to lay the gopher or chat for example. There is also a pretty expensive veggie mode which turns the steaks to some healthy food. Funny ideas, but the shop stock is not something that would make you overly motivated to collect as many coins as possible. How about the game difficulty and controls? Go Hope Dinosaurs belongs among the easy tower defense game. Thanks to the short levels and quite powerful weapons, you will usually have no problem successfully finishing each level. Especially if you have played some tower defense games before. 
You will find a 3 star system here as in most tower defense games, but here you are losing stars for each dino getting to your stack. Which means that you can allow just 2 dinos to get to the end of the path to be able to finish the level with at least 1 star. This sounds brutal, but is actually not thanks to the original design decision. Once the dino reaches his stake, there is a dynamite prepared for him which explodes and destroys all nearby dinos, so it cannot happen that dinos will come in group to eat all your stakes immediately. This is quite an elegant solution which makes the game difficulty easy. So, in general, the game is not too difficult but still challenging if you want to finish each level on 3 stars. What stakes? Controls are very easy. You will just need your mouse to do all the actions. The game interface is user friendly, I can say, and you will not get lost in complicated game menus. Now let's take a close look at the game audio visuals. Cartoonish and colorful graphics perfectly fits the game. It is true that the game objects do not consist of millions of polygons, but all of them are detailed enough and nicely animated. So the game graphics will for sure not make your eyes hurt, plus the game can be run even on low-end machines. Sounds perfectly support the game atmosphere by many funny one-liners that you could hear from the main hero and also from the other defenders. It just confirms how the dubbing could improve the atmosphere. Also the funny sounds made by the dinosaurs highlight the humorous tone of the game. As for the music, it's around average. Nothing that would surprise you either positively or negatively. Ok, let's summarize it now. Is Govon Dinosaurs the game that can drag your attention in the style just one more level and I will go to sleep, or will it become boring and repetitive quite soon? I have found many pros in this game. Humorous story, instant and fast gameplay, direct control over the main character, system of inventory and cards, interesting tower types, good level design, variable and funny enemies, user-friendly interface and controls, reasonable difficulty, beautiful graphics and great sounds along with funny dubbing. Go on Dinosaurs is not a flawless game indeed, so here are the cons. No upgrades for your towers, not very useful shop, low variability of the game environment, and one can find the game mechanics may be too simplistic. The game price of 10 euros on Steam is also something that might be considered a minus for such type of game, so it's worth waiting for at least 50% discount. Thanks to the short levels, instant gameplay and simple game mechanics, the game is suitable for family playing and I think that the kids at the age of 7 or 8 should be able to play it without problems. I have enjoyed the time spent with Go Home Dinosaurs and it dragged me for quite a long time thanks to the dynamic gameplay and if it wouldn't be so simplistic when it comes to tower upgrades and shop, I would give it even higher mark. Like this I'm giving the game thumbs up and Video Gaming Fathers Index 7 plus out of 10. Recommend it but with some discount. Thank you for watching my Go Home Dinosaurs video review and I hope that you have enjoyed it. If so, please give this video a thumb up and also subscribe to my Video Gaming Fathers channel. See ya!